Welcome to Democratize Intelligent Edge with Insight Senior Manager of Intelligence Apps, Amal Ajkalkar. Welcome to the breakout. Um, today we'll be talking about the Intelligent Edge and what it means for our customers. So why Edge and why now, right? Is the question, Edge processing has been there for some time now. But why is it more relevant right now? And we'll look into some of the use cases. We'll look into what has changed uh, in the landscape when it's whether it's hardware, software, innovations in both of those. What is driving um, customers to adopt the edge, um, and what are they seeing there? So if you look at the amount of data that is getting generated these days. Uh, it's tremendous, right? Um, more than you know, 60% of the consumer generated data will be created and processed outside the data center or a single cloud environment. And what that means is that um, data is being generated by all the devices, by all you know, people and processes as well. So to take an example, if you are in a manufacturing industry, um, all your heavy equipment, it is actually generating data, even if it's legacy, um, there are other uh, sensors that can be put on and those will generate data that will make help you understand how your equipment is doing, um, where your people are, cameras and sensors, all of them are generating data. The amount of data that is being generated, it's, it's not feasible to actually send all of that data back to the cloud for processing or to the data center itself. And this is where Edge comes in. We really want that compute to be closer to where that data is generated. And the reason we want, want that to happen is, first of all, it reduces latency. You don't have to, second, we don't have to move the data all over the place, right? We're not moving the data from where it's generated to the data center or to the cloud, uh, process it there, bring it back down, give the insights to all the people who really need to make a decision based on what they're seeing. So to reduce latency, that is a major advantage out there to have that edge processing unit right close to the data, whether it's cameras and you're trying to detect anomalies in, a, in your products on the assembly line um, or looking at uh, transactions in a point of sale system in a store. It could be any number of use cases, but uh, having that uh, data set, having that processing near the edge will give you um, an Im incredible amount of advantage because you will have insights. You will be able to make decisions quickly because of uh, lower latency, because of lower cost, because you're not sending the data all the way to the cloud or to the data center, bringing it back. Um, so there are multiple advantages. And I think that's precisely why edge computing is um, is, is really uh, advantageous to all our customers across all industries. So let's take a, a look at a couple of use cases here. So in looking at manufacturing, um, you know, I've, I've listed out all of these industries, but let's take a couple of them. Manufacturing, when you're looking at your assembly line and you see all the products come through, right? Um, right now, you might have people looking at every product that comes off the conveyor belt and to visually inspect it. Well, it's something that is repeatable, right? And humans are doing that repeat, you know, repeatable task again and again. Um, and it could, it could, you know, bring in fatigue uh, at that point. So this is something where, you know, uh, computer vision can be applied uh, with processing at the edge and uh, using custom vision models be able to detect those uh, anomalies, be able to detect those defects. And only the defective pieces can then be you know, inspected further by the teammates. Um, and so they are not looking at every product that's coming out of the conveyor belt, right? They are using their skill and talent and experience and domain experience essentially to look at the defects um, that are definitely there because the computer vision says, hey, there's, there's a, I see a problem there. Okay, um, and then they can take a look at that. So based on the accuracy of the computer vision model, based on uh, the edge processing that's happening right there and the lower latency, they will be able to do that um, with less stress and less human errors at that point. 
Um, same goes with retail. You have, you know, retail is actually even bigger, right? So retail is you, you can have anomaly detection with transactions that are happening at the point of sale. You could have inventory management in terms of what is on the shelves. Uh, are you running low on something? Does it need to be stocked? Um, back house, right? So you have your warehouses and you want to know what is in store, what is not in store, what do you need to order? So the entire logistics supply chain, um, uh, you know, edge processing plays a big role in all of those. Same goes for, you know, energy, healthcare, uh, the amount of data uh, in healthcare is tremendous. The amount of data that every equipment is generating um, and, and not just from a business point of view, but also from an operations point of view. Right? Um, are you running low on um, certain cleaners? Are you running low on uh, maybe wheelchairs? Right? Are they not enough? And where are they? If they're not there, where are they? Being able to track those. So bringing those operational efficiencies uh, in the healthcare industry, bringing um, analyzing the the imaging images that are coming out of the imaging devices. Uh, being able to detect minor changes uh, over time across the imaging for a patient could also be uh, one of the use cases there. So let's take a look at the high-level architecture. What is an edge, uh, intelligent edge solution? So on the left-hand side, if you see, we've got the sensors and the cameras, but it could also be people. It could be, um, you know, connected equipment, right? The newer equipment that's coming out, the newer devices that are coming out are already smart enough to provide all the data points that you want or are interested in, right? They already have the inbuilt sensors. So if you go from left to right, you have your sensors and cameras and other equipment, all of the data gets ingested in the edge gateway. So that, that's your compute. That is where um, all your AI models, ML models, your um, any other processing you want to, you know, mash the data into a format that you like or your, uh, you know, your business needs, all of that can happen right there. Plus, from that edge gateway, uh, you can integrate into other systems. If you want to integrate into a signal tower saying, you know, if there is a heavy equipment running and your teammate is running or is close to that equipment, you want maybe uh, to send us a, an alert message to the signal tower um, to turn red and sound an alarm to ensure that they're safe, that they don't go any further, right? So that is where latency again is super important. Um, when you move from the edge gateway and you've, you know, let's say you've taken all the data, you've done your, uh, you've run through your ML, uh, machine learning models you've run through your custom vision models and now you're sending the inferences the end result of that to the cloud so what you're doing there are two things one is you're reducing your data set the amount of data that you have to send to the cloud but you're sending only the relevant data back to the cloud and then second is uh because you're doing that uh you know you are reducing the impact on your network as well Right. So now you've sent the data to the cloud. And at that point um, in the cloud, you can process the, the data further. You can visualize that data um, and you can store the data for, you know, for or archive it essentially. So the, the newer machine learning models that you build can rely on that historical data to predict what's going to happen uh, uh, in, in, in the future. Right. Also, the cloud helps you scale these solutions. So you have your edge gateway, but it's not just going to be one, right? It could be one per location. It could be 10 per location. And you could have hundreds of locations across the world. How do you manage that? That is where the scale of, you know, the cloud, the hyperscalers will come in. Um, using your application that's running in the cloud, it does a couple of things. One is it ensures that security is, uh, is, is, is super important there, right? So security is is the number one thing that is addressed. Which devices can come on board? Which devices can send data, right? What can the devices do? What is the business workload that is running on those devices? All of that can be controlled by via the cloud using different services or your own applications. And so you can also then send the messages or commands back to the edge gateway. 
to change the behavior across all devices, across all locations. So this is a very important part of an intelligent edge solution. It's not just about running those workloads at, uh, at the edge, but it's also being able to manage it um, <clears throat> and monitor it and then run or change your workloads as your business changes, right? So, uh, so if you look at you know uh, this high level architecture, you have your hardware and you have your software, software and you have your cloud. So let's look at what has changed in the past couple of years in in those categories, right? So if you look at the hardware, um, you've got even stronger, more compute, and at a lower cost. Um, all of these devices are now ruggedized. Um, so you can actually have them in, in environments where you would normally not think of putting a compute device there, right? Um, because of dust and or moisture or humidity, right? And now connectivity is, is a big thing. Now imagine all the data that is generated. You need to have a good network backbone, and good connectivity to be able to send that data wherever you want at a lower latency. So how would you do that if it didn't have connectivity? Now with 5G advances in 5G, um, you know, better Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi 6 coming out, all of those, you know, technologies are helping with the bridging the gap between where that data is generated, where it's processed, and helping them, helping get the data quickly over to that part, right? Um, even from a sensor market uh, point of view, Earlier on, it used to be difficult to go and buy a sensor or you had to think uh, or building your own sensor. Right now, there are so many companies that are you know, manufacturing these sensors and they're manufacturing them in a way that you can integrate with any application. Some of them still have proprietary protocols, but a lot of them are uh, standardizing on existing protocols like LoRaWAN. Right? So you can go, if you have a LoRaWAN solution, you can plug in any type of um, sensor into that network and you can start seeing the data. Innovations in camera, innovations in other sensors as well from an accuracy or precision point of view, it's amazing to see what's there in the market. And then from a security point of view, and this is very important, to have these edge devices be secure, um, most of the devices will have uh, a trusted platform module on it. They will have a, um, you know, what's called TPM. Um, they also have um, enclaves or uh, certain silos where, uh, you know, your code can be run securely without being tampered, without being uh, hacked. Now, everything can be hacked. Uh, but uh, up till now, from all the information that is available, all the um, attacks that are known, uh, it is very secure. Uh, moving on to software, um, I think, and this is this is you know the hardware and the software have gone really well now, are going really well together now because of containerization, right? So, if you look at how containerization has changed the way we build applications, um, it's it's become more modular. It's become more easier to deploy, uh, to maintain, to update these containers. And containers don't necessarily now need to run on big, huge machines with a lot of compute. They can be run on smaller compute as well. Um, some of the containers are as small as 60 MB, right? That is insane on how fast some of these containers are downloaded, it's spun up and running out, up and running, right? Um, the, the remote monitoring, which is very important in an edge solution, has gone a long way. Um, we can now have out of band uh, management, which was there for desktops and, and mobile phones, and you can manage those. But having an edge device out in the middle of the field, as long as it has connectivity, you can actually manage that. You can monitor it. You can understand how it's doing. You know, what's the temperature on it? Uh, did somebody turn it off by mistake? Um, if so, can I turn it on remotely? All of these features are making it more um, usable making it more viable to be you know to deploy all of these devices across multiple locations out in the middle of the field or um, near an oil well where you know 
human presence is limited, right? Nobody's going to go there and sit there and you know, take care of that one compute device. So we want devices that are more ruggedized. We want more device, devices that are managed. And this is where, you know, from a, a software point of view it has enabled that, right? Remote monitoring, containerization, uh, innovations in machine learning or clustering really helps with, you know, clustering helps with um, high availability, disaster recovery, when you have multiple compute devices all working in tandem um, and running the same workload. Um, to Let's say if one of the node goes offline, the second one takes over and the business continues, right? So we truly believe that Customers have an opportunity to digitally transform their business by leveraging the intelligent edge. And when I say we believe is we really see the potential here of what the business, what our you know, businesses can do across the industries, no matter what business outcome they're going for, um, they can truly um, leverage technologies like these to get to their outcomes and keep on transforming, keep on getting better, uh, providing values to their customers. So let's dig a little deeper into what does it take to have a solution like this, right? Um, if you, let's look at the approach now. So the way we approach any solution is to look at what value does it provide to the customer, right? That's the question. You have to define your business outcome. If you don't know why you're doing it, then there's a chance that it'll never end up in production. You will, you know, you'll spend money, but you won't see the value out of it. So defining that business outcome, defining the return on investment on that effort is super important. So now let's say you've defined it, you know, I you know, you have to do this uh, and you know the value you would get if you actually did that. So how would you do that, right? So one is everybody needs to be on board, um, right? So the people who are making that decision truly need to believe, yes, this is the right thing for the business. People who will be affected by that change need to understand why that technology is going to be important. So um, change management in these solutions is important because unless the people who are affected day to day by these solutions, don't believe in the value, it's not making their lives easier, there will be a little bit of resistance to change there. So once you have those people, you have to define the process. And the process is not just about how that device or how that solution is going to work, but changing changes in processes um, that are already in place, right? Um, that will be affected by this new solution. Uh, looking at software, what integrations are required, um, what, um, from a scale point of view, where does that application need to run, right? Edge and cloud or edge and data center or data center itself, depending on what that solution is, um, you, you have to plan for it, right? Um, when it comes to hardware, it's become a little easier these days because like I said, the, the sensor market is there. The edge compute market is, is vast um, and great devices exist. So you, there's, a, uh, there's a small chance that you have to go and build your own device, which is, uh, which is a project in itself. But if you look, if you just use the existing devices, uh, I think the hardware component has become a little more easier at that point, but we still have to plan for it. We, under, we need to understand how many locations um, we need to de deploy this to. We need to understand what type of metrics or data we, that we need to collect. Uh, we need to understand what workloads we need to run on that edge device itself. Then we also need to think about how are we going to deploy, right? We have a great solution. If you have 100 locations, how are you going to roll it out? Uh, who is going to do it? Do we have teams in place to do that? What type of changes would be required in every location for that solution to be deployed? Um, does every location have the right connectivity so that we, once we deploy, we do get the results back and we can actually manage those devices? Um, so if you look at you know people, processes, software, hardware deployment, that's just to get it out of the door, right? So once it's there in production, now we have to think about 
how are we going to maintain that solution? And when you're thinking about maintaining a solution, it is um, two things. One is software and hardware, right? Um, you have your edge devices, you have your uh, network connectivity, uh, you've got the routers, all of that stuff already in place. You have to maintain that, upgrade that, patch that stuff. And then you have your software solution. Right? So thinking about DevOps, thinking about MLOps, making sure that you have those pipelines in place so that you can you know, maintain that solution. And then if something, if something goes wrong, what is our plan of action? That has to be put in place as well. Who do you call? Uh, who can triage this um, solution to make sure that is it a hardware, you know, just to understand whether it's a hardware problem, is it a software problem, um, and then who is going to resolve that problem, right? Do you have the teams to do it? Do you need a partner to do it? All Once you have this entire plan together, it becomes much easier once it goes into production because there are no questions of, oh, there's something went wrong, who do I call, right, essentially. Do, if you look at once you get you know a step further and you've defined your outcomes and you define all your entire plan, you have to understand what you already have and where do you want to be, right? So the, let's say the high level architecture is in place. You have to do the gap analysis to understand, okay, from a security point of view, from a data point of view, from integrations, from visualizations, from management, what all components do I already have? And if I have those components, are those um, secure? Are those scalable? And if so, how can I integrate or leverage those? If I don't have one of those, then I need to put those in place, right? So it's, it's a great way to leverage what you have and then also uh, you know, leverage what you have. And then if you don't have something, plan for it and build it out, right? <clears throat> so if you look at... From an implementation point of view, um, there are some long-term decisions that have to be made, right? You have to think about the end-to-end -end security, right from the sensor to the edge, all the way to the cloud, and then to all the consumer devices that might be in place, whether it's a mobile device, it could be a watch, it could be a small buzzer, it could be anything. What does security look like? Because if somebody were to have access to even one of those devices, there is a potential that they could have get access to other devices or they could change a data point or they could um, send an alert when there is no alert and that triggers off um, you know, a different plan uh, of action, right? So end-to-end -end security is super important there and to think about and plan for it right from the hardware to the software. Containerization, DevOps and MLOps, um, those are again, um, come from the software side of things, but it helps in, in terms of deploying new updates, deploying new AI models, making sure there is a pipeline for collecting new uh, images or data points and being able to train your models and then version those models, and test it and do A-B testing on the edge, do A-B testing in the cloud, test it on different devices, push it back to the cloud at scale in different locations, right? And how do you roll those changes out? Um, to have uh, not necessarily a complete plan in place because things will change, but just to have those in mind. So when you are implementing a solution, um, these things, these are some of the things that you should be considering. Um, these are like, for example, MLOps. When you're building an, uh, a machine learning model uh, or you know AI model and you say, okay, I've got my first version out of the door. Great, it's working. I've got you know 75% accuracy, fantastic i'm going to collect some more data and hope that my you know once i train uh, and i get other uh, outliers uh, exceptions that my uh, model will do better great but is there a, is there a process in place how are you going to collect additional data train it deploy it and so on and so forth so uh, secure device onboarding is is actually a major component of an edge solution because once you deploy uh, or send a new device or a replacement device, how does that device actually show up in your solution? What is it supposed to do? Who is going to image the device? Uh, you know, when you're imaging the device, what is the OS that you're using? Is it patched? Is it up to date? Are there were there any security considerations of that OS 
that came up after the first version was deployed. And all, so all of these considerations, I don't want to go through each one of them, but uh, these long-term strategy considerations have to be done before you, you know, go ahead and deploy to production. Again, we don't need a plan for each one of them, but they have to be at the back of your mind thinking, you know, I need to think about all of these to make sure that my, uh, I'm not painted in the corner. So the way we would start with any of these solutions is once you've understood your uh, business outcome and you have your um, essentially your backlog of all the features you want uh, to implement, right? You start to assign the priority to all those use cases and you assign the priorities in terms of what will provide the maximum impact to my business right now. Take that use case, implement that use case, um, con you know, given all the considerations in, in the previous slide, right? Um, implement that use case, deploy it, see, you know, you start to see the, the business value out of it, take the next set of features, start implementing those, right? The, the idea being that if you think of implementing a framework, a foundation for all the common uh, features that are required in an edge solution, secure, like secure device onboarding, how do you send telemetry? How do you manage those workloads at the edge devices? How do you manage locations? Like, you know, got 10 locations, you've got, you know, 20 devices in those 10 locations. How are you going to manage those? Alerts, who gets the alerts? Who gets onboarded onto the system? Um, and then uh, even from a visualization point of view, when the data comes in, how do you visualize, right? It's pretty standard. So if you have those standard features in place, you build that framework, adding additional use cases, becomes easier because you're just hooking into the same framework that you've built already. <clears throat> and let's scale it out, right? So now that you have this in place and you've deployed it, um, how do you make sure that you can add more use cases? You can roll it out to multiple locations, add another, another location, uh, maybe an another integration, right? So once it goes into production, again, DevOps and MLOps, I have that on almost every slide. It's, it's super important uh, to be able to manage these workloads. Device imaging is another one. Um, once you start scaling it out, you need to be able to consistently image devices with a golden image that that is updated, right? That is patched, making sure all the security patches are there. You've done some testing on that OS um, and then be able to consistently take that image and deploy to every device as it rolls out. So there is no, you know, you don't have um, a system where there's OS number one here and OS number two there and OS number three there. It'll be a nightmare to manage three different OSs. So you need to have a consistent way of imaging those devices. And thinking about, you know, patching and OS updates or fix or replace of the hardware itself, right? Can I fix a hardware device or do I need to replace it? Who's going to do that? Having a plan in place for each of these will help uh, maintain that solution uh, efficiently, right? And, and in a sustainable way, right? Um, so, and then the last one is the edge monitoring services that uh, we've spoken about that before as well, but that's important because once these are out in the field, it becomes really um, difficult to maintain. Uh, and I'll give you an example. There was one time where uh, we deployed an edge solution, and this was a couple of years ago, um, where we deployed an edge solution in the middle of nowhere in a farm and um, somebody turned off the edge device. And um, I got a call saying, hey, this is not working. Like, I can see it's not working. Somebody turned it off, but it's in the middle of the field, right? So guess what? Because there were no out of band management services there uh, or edge monitoring services, the customer had to call me and say, hey, this went down, right? <clears throat> and then second, um, I had to fly out just to push a button, say, turn it on again, right? So to, to get around that, I think the, the edge monitoring service with out of band management becomes super, super important, especially when you've deployed this at scale. Um, and 
um, you want to be able to manage these without people flying across the globe to turn devices on and off. Uh, let's take a look at a couple of use cases. I just have three um, and see how we've been able to, um, uh, you know, help our customers. <clears throat> so with this, um, it was essentially we built uh, a computer vision or a machine learning model to identify issues on, you know, in the production process itself, right? So this is a use case that I've spoken to before, but this is something that we've done for, uh, for our customer here. Um, the, another product quality is, uh, another product quality use case <clears throat> is installing a, you know, a thermal imaging camera uh, on a die casting machine, and then be able to detect anomalies um, through it, right? So looking at the thermal image and saying, okay, I, you know, certain, there may be an air bubble in there and it hasn't been sealed properly. Um, or there is a, maybe the, the temperature was too high. And then there is, there is, um, there's a gap or the material itself, uh, tore apart. Like there's so many other use cases when it comes to product quality and different sensors and cameras, um, that we can, you know, deploy and help with any process that's more repeatable. We can actually resolve those issues by just using computer vision and edge processing right there. This third one is uh, for Newcrest Mining. We, you know, it's it's a public case study, but um, what what they're doing is having sensors in all over the place in a mining. Um, <clears throat> in a mine, a mine field, right? And having uh, on a mining deployment, essentially, and having those uh, data points come through at the edge, uh, analyze that uh, data, um, and then get those insights that they required from a business point of view, right? And be able to uh, bring efficiency into the process where there are so many, it's first of all, it's a large location, right? And you've got so many different equipments and, departments and each one is doing their job, being able to extract data from all of those operations, have, being able to look at that in one place and then um, get insights out of it uh, becomes super important. So with this last case study, uh, you know, I, I'd like to wrap it up saying, um, I think we truly believe that Intelligent Edge has a massive impact uh, on a business uh, and you will see the, the economies of scale there. You'll be able to get your insights and decision-making power. Uh, you know, essentially, you'll be able to make decisions quickly uh, because you'll have insights uh, right there as it happens. Um, so you could uh, save money or improve your ROI on, on your operations itself. There are a few related sessions. Would really encourage you to go and view those as well especially the cloud agnostic edge solutions, the, the journey from idea to scale, which talks about how do you take an idea and then how do you bring it into production and then maintain it and scale it out as well. So thank you so much for viewing this. I really appreciate that.